First and foremost, congratulations. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you're taking your first steps towards becoming an owner operator. Now, I'm sure this is a very exciting time for you as it should be. You know, you're gonna be making a lot more money than you did before. You're gonna have a lot more control over your life. But on the flip side, you're also going to have to carry a lot more responsibility on your shoulders. And part of this responsibility is buying your first semi truck. Hey everyone, welcome back to Guild 22. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you step by step how to buy your first semi truck and what traps you need to look out for. But before we jump into the video, I would really appreciate it if you scroll down and like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload. It's free to do and it will only take a second out of your day, but it really helps the channel grow. So I would really appreciate that. All right, so with that out of the way, let's talk about what you actually came here for, which is figuring out how to buy a semi truck or your first semi truck. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, buying a truck is a huge responsibility and it's one of the most important decisions that you will have to make as an owner operator. Now, the truckers that don't do their research and they just buy any old cheap truck have a miserable time as an owner operator and they usually end up closing shop within a year or so. Since I'm assuming you want to avoid that, here's how you can begin the process of buying your very own semi truck. Now, the very first step you need to take in order to buy a semi truck comes way before you even see the inside of a dealership and it's probably the most crucial step, which is understanding the fundamentals. What I mean is you need to know the basic components of a semi truck, how these components work together to make the truck functional, and finally how each component can be made more efficient. Just think about it. If you don't know what is inside your truck, how it runs and what makes one truck run better than another, then you literally have no idea what you're buying or what to compare it to. I'm not saying you need to get a master's in mechanical engineering, you know, all I'm telling you to do is spend some time educating yourself on what you're going to end up buying. This brings me to the next step that you need to take, which is do your research. But wait, wasn't the first step about doing research? Well, yes and no. You know, the first step was more about understanding semi trucks. This step is about understanding you. After you feel like you've got a good understanding of semi trucks, what you need to do is spend some time understanding your needs and then work backwards to find a truck that will fit those needs. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why don't I just buy a truck with a lot of power? You know, that way I'll be able to carry any load that I want to. First of all, that's a dumb question and you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm just joking, well, kind of. But the reason you don't wanna do this is because bigger displacement and higher horsepower leads to a lower fuel economy. And with fuel being one of your biggest expenses as a trucking company or as an owner operator, you definitely want to avoid this. Just a quick side note, this is why step number one of this guide is so crucial. You know, if you just rushed into buying a truck without knowing what you're buying, you would have run the risk of losing a lot of money. And the worst part is you would have never figured out why your business was struggling more than the others. Anyways, going back to what I was saying, you need to understand your needs and you can do this by listing out what type of loads you will run, what routes you plan on running, um, if you're going to be running local or regional or over the road, uh, what type of terrain you will have to drive through, etc, etc. The plan is to create a detailed plan of operations before you start looking at semi trucks to buy. Just think about it. How are you going to know what truck to buy if you don't know what you're buying it for? Remember, your truck is just a tool for your business. You know, you don't buy a tool and then try to build a business around it. You know, that's completely backwards and you would think I'm crazy if I tried to do that. However, many new owner operators make that mistake when they're just starting out. All right, so after you understand the fundamentals of a semi truck and you figure out what you're gonna use that truck for, the next step in this process is deciding whether you wanna buy new or used. Now, there are many pros and cons to both, but in my experience, the only big difference between the two options is peace of mind. And this may sound crazy, but again, in my experience, all the used trucks that we've bought have cost us about the same as the new trucks in repairs, maintenance, and even fuel expense. Now, even when the fuel expense, maintenance, and repairs cost more in the used trucks, the savings that we get with a cheaper loan payment a smaller down payment and decreased depreciation will 
still financially make it a better decision. Just remember, your biggest expense as an owner operator will be accepting cheap freight. Well, that and fuel. If you want to know how you can avoid doing that and learn how you can negotiate for $3 and even $4 per mile sometimes, you can watch this video that I have playing on the screen. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video. As I mentioned before, whenever I buy a used semi truck, I always know that I'm getting a well-maintained piece of equipment at a heavily discounted price. And the way that I'm able to do that is by understanding the common problems with the manufacturer, the model and class of truck that I'm purchasing. You know, before the internet, this would have been really hard to figure out, but through the power of forums, um, articles, Google, and even YouTube, you can easily find this information. You can also do it through good old fashioned word of mouth, but personally, I wouldn't just rely on that. All right, so after I figured out the common problems, I like to get a PPI done by a certified mechanic or automotive tech in the area. And for those of you that don't know, a PPI or pre-purchase inspection is exactly what the name implies. You know, it's a detailed assessment by a qualified individual to determine the cosmetic, mechanical, and safety condition of a vehicle before you actually follow through with the purchase. Now, a lot of people get a PPI done for personal vehicles, but you can also do them with commercial vehicles. And the whole point of a PPI is to expose any existing problems or to reveal any maintenance shortcomings that may become a potential safety or financial issue for you in the future. If the semi truck that I'm looking at is too far away for me to go out there and check it out myself or test drive, or if it's out of warranty, I without a doubt get this done. And if the seller won't allow a PPI to be done, this is a massive red flag and you should immediately run away as fast as you can from this quote unquote deal. Another way you can protect yourself and find great used semi truck deals if you're going down that route is by purchasing through a reputable dealer. Now, I'll talk more about this in one of the next few steps, but for now, just know that that's another way you can reduce the risk of buying a lemon. Since you're a new owner operator, I would almost always recommend you buy used simply because right now you have time, but you don't have money. You know, you can use this time to look around, um, figure out the pricing in the secondhand market and understand the common problems with the trucks of the biggest manufacturers and even find solutions for them. And when you get the ball rolling a little bit and you start making some money as an owner operator, then you can look into buying new trucks if you want to, you know? Even now that we run a successful small fleet at Guild 22, we sometimes end up buying uh, very reliable, comfortable, and well-maintained used trucks at a fraction of the price of new trucks. Just remember, this is a commercial vehicle that we're buying to make money, you know? It doesn't need to have all the bells and whistles, you know? No one will care about your reclining bunk except you. And at the end of the day, as long as the truck is safe, reliable, and comfortable, it's really all we need. Oh, and just a quick important note, when I say use, I'm talking about nothing older than five years and with less than 350,000 miles on it. Obviously, none of these rules are set in stone. You know, if you find a great deal, but the truck is six years old with 400 to 450,000 miles on it, you can still buy it. You know, these are just my general guidelines that I begin with when I'm buying a used truck. All right. So after you figured out whether you're buying new or used, the next step is to decide whether you're going to buy it with cash finance it or lease it. In my personal opinion, if I had to list these options from best to worst, I would go with finance, buy and lease in that order. Now, if you have the cash to outright buy your truck somehow, you know, then you can just go ahead and do that. You know, it's the simplest way to go about purchasing a truck and it's the least stressful method. However, even now when I have the cash to buy, I almost always finance and I do this because of this small thing you may have heard of before called leverage. Now, I know most of you have heard of the word leverage before, but you may not completely understand what it means or how it works, which is totally fine. Leverage is just an investment strategy of using borrowed money to increase the potential return of an investment. 
let me just show you how this works using um, real world examples. So let's assume you're planning on buying this semi truck that you found online for $100,000. Now you have two options here. You can either pay for it all in cash right now, or you can finance it and pay it off slowly. You can also lease it, but we're going to ignore that option for now. To find out which option makes more sense, we're going to do what any mega carrier would do if they had to make this decision. And trust me, this is what they're doing. You know, they don't become huge companies just by guessing. You know, they get there by using financial formulas and taking calculated risk. The key word there being calculated. Anyways, what we're going to do in order to find the best option between buying and financing is look at the net present value or NPV and the modified internal rate of return or MIRR. Now, don't worry. Right now, you don't need to know what these are or how to use them. All you need to know is if the NPV is greater than zero, then it means that option is profitable and we should pursue it. If it's less than zero, then it's not profitable and we shouldn't pursue it. Now, if both buying and financing have a higher NPV than zero, then we will pick the option with the higher number, assuming that we can only pick one option. All right, so let's just run through this real quick. On the left, we got buy with cash and on the right, we got finance. Let's just start with the all cash option first. So the money that we have to pay today to buy this semi truck is going to be the full price of the truck, which is $100,000 and the discount rate we're going to use is going to be our cost of capital or our whack. Again, don't worry about this for now. I'll explain it at the end of this example when we're looking at the MIRR. Anyways, moving on by buying this semi truck in cash and doing local slash regional loads only. I expect to make $174,000 in net income every year for the next five years. Again, this is just an example. You know, you can use whatever number you feel comfortable with, but personally, I know I can make this amount consistently for five years because of my negotiation strategy and the huge network of shippers and brokers that I work with. You know, for someone that's brand new and is not working with a high level dispatcher, shameless plug for Guild 22, chances are you're going to make much less than $174,000, which is expected and is totally fine. You know, just use a realistic number if you're going to run this calculation yourself or there's no real point in doing this. All right, so with all of our numbers put in, the NPV comes out to $581,567.45, which is great. You know, it means if we buy the truck in cash, in today's money, we can expect to make $581,567.45 over the next five years. Now let's take a look at the financing option and why I like to use this option instead. So since we're financing, our only cost today to buy this truck or our initial investment will be the 20% down payment, which is common among used trucks. You know, for newer trucks, it's more like 10%. Anyways, for us, it's going to be 20%. So 20% of 100,000 is, of course, $20,000. The discount rate that we're going to use is, again, our cost of capital or WAC, except now that we're using equity and debt we have to recalculate our WAC, which is why it's now 5.44%. Again, I don't want you to become overwhelmed by all this finance stuff, you know? I'll slowly teach you all of this and you will understand it, I promise. But if you want a quick explanation in two sentences, here you go. Debt is technically less expensive than equity because the interest on debt is tax deductible. That's why a company with no debt has a higher WAC than a company with debt. DB7, I know you're a financial advisor, so back up my explanation and my logic in the comments. All right, so now that we're paying about $2,000 per month or $24,000 per year in truck payments, because obviously we're financing the semi truck, we will make the $174,000 minus the 24,000 in payments, which is gonna net us $150,000 every year. Now, if we run the NPV for the finance option, you can see we make $621,597.95, which is obviously more than the buy option. Again, both options are going to make us money, but you can see how when you leverage money in certain situations, you can make a lot more money than if you just bought with cash. Also, if you buy with cash, assuming you only had $100,000, that is probably much riskier than 
uh, leveraging your money because now you have no reserves left to pay for any unexpected repairs or maintenance. So that's just another thing you should keep in mind. Anyways, we can also figure out the MIRR by using the numbers that I've already shown you. For the cash option, we have a MIRR of 37.97%. And for the finance option, we have a MIRR of 75.66%. Now, as long as the MIRR is higher than this number right here, which is our WAC, we will make money. And again, both options have a higher MIRR than their respective WAC, which means both options are profitable. However, since we can only pick one option, we would choose the highest one, which is the finance option. Now, this is why I get so excited talking about new finance and investing strategies and why I keep pushing you truckers to learn more about this. If you want me to make more videos on business, finance, and investing related videos, please let me know by scrolling down and leaving a like, uh, subscribing to the channel and turning on post notifications so I know that you guys are interested. Anyways, as I was saying, whether you finance or buy in cash, you can make money either way. One will make you more money than the other, but that doesn't mean everyone watching this video should do that. You know, some of you are more risk averse. Some of you don't have a good credit score. Some of you won't work with a dispatcher, etc., etc. You know, there are a lot of factors to consider here more than just what makes me more uh, what makes me more money on paper. I would really recommend Googling should I finance or buy and read through a few articles to see the bigger picture. Or you could just wait on a video where I'm going to cover this topic more in depth. Now, some of you may have noticed that I haven't talked about leasing at all. And the reason for that is I hate leasing. You know, I believe leasing is for the owner operators that don't really know if they want to be in the trucking industry. You know, leasing for me is more of a short term solution, but you're essentially paying off someone else's truck and making them money in the process. And even if you decide to buy the truck at the end of the lease, you're going to end up paying more than if you just financed or bought in the beginning. Not only that, but the restrictions that are put on you uh, as part of the lease agreement may cause you to make less money than if you just financed or bought a semi truck. Again, just like financing isn't the best solution for everyone, leasing isn't the worst option for everyone either. You know, if you're really strapped for cash, if you have a bad credit score, and if you don't know if you want to be in the industry long term or not, leasing is a great option for you. Whatever you do though, just promise me you won't become a lease operator for another carrier. You know, I'm already, I'm already working on a video where I explain how they end up scamming you, but I'll save all that for that video. All right, I'm just going to fly through the next two steps because I spent way too much time on the last one, even though it's an important step. So step number five is find a reputable dealer. Now, only when you reach this step are you ready to buy, you know, so now is the time to look around for a few trucks based on the past steps that I've already covered and find a truck that will work for you. And during your search process, you may find that you're going to come across some private sellers. Now, I usually don't buy from private sellers unless I know that I'm getting a great deal. And the reason for that is with a dealer, you can build a relationship and buy trucks, hopefully at a discounted price. You know, if you if you get really close with them, you'll be notified of any new trucks that they have coming in and be among the first to put a deposit on them. Just think about how useful this relationship can be when the new electric trucks start hitting the market like the Tesla Semi. Also, here's another free pro tip. Just because a dealership is big and fancy, it doesn't mean that they'll treat you right, you know? So do your research, come in prepared, and hit up all the dealerships in your area, and then make a decision. If the semi truck you're planning on buying is too far away to drive to and inspect in person, then you can set up a Zoom call or even a simple phone call. You know, any form of contact, any form of contact will tell you a lot more about the dealership and the salesperson than just an email back and forth. Finally, the last step in this guide to buying your semi truck or buying your first semi truck is finding a local truck shop for those inevitable moments when your truck is going to break down for no good reason. This is really just a bonus step, but I found it very useful to build a solid working relationship with your local truck shop. You know, they're going to be your 
nights in shining armor when the shit hits the fan and your truck won't start at four in the morning. By proactively reaching out to them and telling them you're a company looking to work with a dedicated shop, you can kind of gauge what their rates are for common parts and repairs and compare that to the other local shops in the area. Not only that, but when you actually pick a shop and you start developing a professional relationship with them, if you're really, really lucky, you could get discounts on those parts and repairs, but the chances of that happening are very slim because that's what they make their money on. But what definitely could happen is that they can make you more of a priority, which means anytime your truck is in the shop, instead of waiting two weeks for them to get around to fixing it, maybe it only takes one. Again, I'm not saying that this will definitely happen, but I can guarantee it won't work if you don't put in the extra effort and try. All right, so that's everything you need to know in order to buy your first semi truck. You know, we covered a lot in this video and it took a long time for me to put this whole video together. So if you could just take a second out of your day to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications, it would really help the YouTube algorithm push my video out to new viewers who can benefit from this knowledge. Also, if you're a company driver or owner operator, looking for a new opportunity with a high paying company, feel free to submit an application at www.guilt22.com careers. And after you're done with your application, you can also download one of our free templates that will help you make more money as an owner operator or as a truck driver at www.guilt22.com templates. So yeah, with that being said, thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.